Recording in progress. Call our meeting to order. And the first order of business is the administration of oath of office. Is that the stand? I don't know. I only do this once a year. I don't remember. Everybody could raise your right hand. This one, Repeat after me. I state your name. I state your name. Do you solemnly swear or affirm? Do you solemnly, solemnly swear, swear or affirm? That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the State of Indiana. And the Constitution of the State of Indiana. And will faithfully, impartially, and lawfully. And will faithfully, impartially, and lawfully. Carry out my duties as a member of the St. Joseph County Redevelopment Commission. Carry out my duties as a member of the St. Joseph County Redevelopment Commission. Welcome back. Thank you. The second order of business is the election of officers. Hey, Frankie. You want to have them sign real quick? Yeah. Okay. They'll sign so you can see it first. All right. Did you need to administrate that? Nope. They just did. Okay. I missed the fun. You are the official. Josh, this is a different form than the rest. Hmm. Way to go, Phil. Maybe I was voted out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that it's different, it's just he doesn't have a. That's a different form. Yeah, so he's, I gave it to Mr. Garrett to look at. Oh, okay. Dan, what's up with the USC jersey? Proceed then to the election of officers for the uh, 2023 uh, business year. I uh, assume the first position is president. Is there a motion? Motion to nominate Dennis Jordan president. Second. Any other nominations? Should we vote on these all at once or do you have to? We can do individually. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to nominate Dennis Jordan as president. Mr. Gilliam, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Goble, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Craig, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Critchlow? Aye. Mr. Gordon? <laughs> Aye. The motion carries one to zero. No. Okay, then for the, is there, uh, Vice President, is there a motion to nominate someone for the position of Vice President? Do you want to do it? I'll, I'll uh, nominate Josh Goble. For the position of vice president. Second. Is there any further nominations? Hearing none. We have a motion and a second to nominate Josh Goble as vice president. Mr. Gillian, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Goble? Aye. Mr. Greg? Aye. Mr. Critchlow? Aye. And Mr. Gordon? Aye. Motion carries. Nominate uh, Jason Critchlow as secretary. Second. Any further nominations? Hearing none. Mr. We have a motion and a second to nominate Jason Critchlow as secretary. Mr. Gillian? Aye. Mr. Goble? Aye. Mr. Gray? Aye. Mr. Critchlow? Aye. And Mr. Jordan? Aye. Motion carries five to zero. Who is the second on that? 
that should keep that Josh around. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Now we move to the approval of minutes. No minutes from last meeting. So we have no we have no December minutes. Those will be in the okay. February packet. The next, item, the next item on the agenda is the, uh, the general redevelopment uh, budget, so the December report. The December report was, was passed out this morning. I apologize. I thought that was in the packet uh, when it was distributed. Uh, the, only, the only one I would note that's probably a little out of the ordinary, uh, towards the bottom there's uh, two to Fidelity National Title. Those relate to property acquisitions out on Douglas Road. The the one for 232,000 was the purchase of 14402, and then the 15,000 is earnest money for the purchase of of uh, 14380. Many times I've dealt with those. You think I'd remember? So those are the real uh, expenses that are, you know, kind of outside the ordinary of the payments. I would also note, uh, if you look a little farther up, you see Sebasti, Kaminsky, Kaminsky, Oathouse. Uh, those are the option payments for the 2023 option uh, to hold the IEC site one for an additional year. And we'll talk about that a little later in the meeting. So if there's any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Any questions? The Fidelity? Yes. Uh, what was the fidelity? So that was the for the they're the uh, agent for the purchase of the properties. Oh, okay. okay. I assume it's minor, but the first item without a check number, it's just. Well, that's a good question. Yeah, I will, <laughs> we will verify that there. I mean, there was a check number. I'm sure. I assume. Yeah. Check on that. Okay. The next item in the agenda is resolution 2023-01, and this is the the resolution for the 2023 budget. Uh, we've we've kind of gone back and forth on whether these should be done by resolution or not. We decided this year based on the fact we reference uh, the budget several times, uh, especially when we're making. Uh, purchases of property through the Board of Commissioners. We reference back to the, the budget. Uh, so we wanted to do this by resolution. So in the packet is the resolution, the uh, budget and cash report, uh, then for each development area is, is kind of that colored section of the, the budget. Uh, gives a little more specific breakdown. Uh, this is very similar to what you've seen the last couple of months. Um, but just wanted to note a couple things. I would note uh, on the front page, uh, on the cover memo, uh, again, another positive year for TIF increment. We continue to grow the TIF uh, budgets uh, or TIF collection. Um, so this year we should bring in about 6.3 million. Last year we brought in 5.2 million in revenue. So again, that's a uh, credit to the work that you all are doing as far as the management of the TIF districts that, that we continue to bring in that ad additional increment every year. Um, if there's any questions about the budget, I would be happy to answer them. I would uh, like to note uh, Daniel Dalton and Steve Dalton sitting behind me uh, have done, been a tremendous resource for us as we work to put together the budgets and again try to hone in every year on a, a little bit more specific budget, uh, uh, try to give better information and, and be able to track better where our money goes. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Um, could you elaborate a little bit on um, under uh, Fund 4302, the $2 million for the New Carlisle South Shore Station? Uh, yeah. So one of the projects that we've, we've, we've talked about over the last couple of years and one of the projects uh, that based on the fact that, that uh, the, or Nick did is now signed a contract with DLZ to do the reroute of the train to the airport, the next project that they would like to do is, is – uh, um, we're actually working to start a set of meeting to talk about the train station project in New Carlisle. So right now there's a flag stop station in Hudson Lake. They would like to move that to New Carlisle. So what we've done is, is we budgeted money, whether that's going to be for property acquisition, whether that's going to be for uh, you know, engineering services, other design work, things like that. We put a placeholder of $2 million in there for what that project could be. That could be grant match, that could be some other things. So that's what that $2 million represents. Now, any contracts related to that project or anything related to that project specifically would have to come back here for approval. 
but that's a number that we put in at this point in time for that project. Place over. All right. One other question mm -hmm. on uh, 4301. It says a flex fund for the Alt Altium project. Yes. So what's a flex fund? So in the development agreement, so I think that was the term we used in the development agreement, we have a million dollar uh, fund or million dollar budget line item in the utilities account. So we, we have uh, uh, projects related to water, sewer, electric, gas, uh, fiber, but we also put in a, a million dollar line for flex items. So whether they needed to run temporary water, whether they needed to do uh, uh, temporary electric or temporary sewer for their trailer city, things like that, there was a million dollar placeholder in the development agreement. So that, that's what that million dollars represents. So that's a develop, if that project were to move forward, and we believe that it will, that million dollars just needs to be accounted for at the front end because those are gonna be front end expenses for that project. Either now or later in the meeting, could you give us an update on the project? As part of the reimbursement agreement discussion here, we'll which is the next item, we'll, we'll okay. cover those Thank then. You. Yep. Right. Thank you. Yep. Are there any other questions on the budget presented? Okay. Is there a motion to approve the budget and resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Gillian, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Goble, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Critchlow? Aye. Mr. Greg? Aye. And Mr. Jordan? Aye. Motion here. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, the next item in your packet is under the New Carlisle Economic Development Area, and this is reimbursement agreement for IEC site number one. Um, so this, this agreement has a couple of different pieces to it. So uh, earlier there, or late last year, we agreed through the Redevelopment Commission, passed a resolution to extend the option agreements for IEC site one. So for option A land, which is controlled by the Sebasti family, and option C land, which is controlled by the Kaminsky family. Uh, each of those options had a price. So to continue for an additional year with, with Sebasti's, it was $5,000. With Kaminsky's, it was $75,000. So there was an $80,000 outlay by the Redevelopment Commission for continuing the option for one year. So this reimbursement agreement first contemplates that in the event that the options are not transferred to GM, then we would be reimbursed for that $80,000. Um, in the event that the options do transfer, then we would not be reimbursed for that expense as part of this agreement. So it was one of those where uh, we had some conversations about kind of having it both ways, getting approved, getting, getting coverage both ways. In the event that it doesn't transfer, uh, we felt that that was, that was the best position to be in. So that would repay us the $80,000. The second half of this agreement, though, is really the more critical element of, of the agreement. So in the event that the options are exercised for the year, there's two things that the farmers can do. The farmers can farm the land or they cannot farm the land. And if they don't farm the land, it's because either they have chosen not to farm it or we have told them under the agreement, under the option agreement, that they can't farm. And so what we have before you today is in the event that we tell them they can't farm, there's a, there's a cost for that no farm option. Mm -hmm. And so within a six month period after the time that notice is given, a payment has to be made to the farmers based on a, a $500 per acre cost plus the cost of the crop that is being farmed uh, the, the, the acreage value of that and the amount of acre or the amount of, uh, of harvest of that land. So there's a calculation there. So for example, uh, for the Sebasti property, just by itself, that number could reach a million dollars of, of repayment if we have told them not to farm. In the case of the Kaminsky, that number is tremendously higher. So what we have done is negotiated with General Motors that in the event that they, that we all agree that the land is not to be farmed and, and we have a, a, some date certain of which that, that notice has to be given, if we make that notice to the farmers that they can't farm, then after a six month period, that payment is due. In this particular case, General Motors has said they will pay that cost to have the no farm option exercise. Um, a couple more specifics, um, in the event that the no farm option is exercised 
and the option is is transferred to General Motors before the six month time period, then that payment is not due. Uh, that's in the option agreement, so that payment wouldn't be due. If it's exercised after the six months, or the, tra the property is transferred after that six months, payment is still due, the farmers keep that cost, and then would get the sale proceeds for their land. So either way, General Motors is covered for the cost of the farm option. So what we'd ask for your approval today is to approve this reimbursement agreement. We believe that this uh, uh, shows good faith as far as where we are on the project um, and, and really next steps as it relates to the project. Uh, maybe maybe before you vote, I, again, maybe more as an update of where we are. So uh, this, is, this is a piece that we've been negotiating here for really since the end of last year. We knew that this was going to be a cost. We knew this was going to be a cost that we could not absorb as a redevelopment commission. I mean, I guess if you look at the budget, we could absorb, you know, three, three and a half million, million dollar no farm cost if we had to, but we didn't feel that that was a cost that we should absorb for General Motors if, if they were going to move ahead. So this is something that we've been negotiating. We're also working on a, an overlay design district for the IEC, um, and specifically, we've spent some time over the last couple of weeks working on how we can take a big building, or what we'd call a landmark building, uh, in this case of the overlay, and, and have specific design guidelines and, and landscaping and lighting and parking and, and setback requirements specifically to those buildings, but as all the way down to small building projects uh, covered in a design overlay. So the design overlay was set to go to council tonight. It's been withdrawn uh, because we found that there's additional changes that need to be done to the ordinance. That'll be refiled in January for January 13th and heard in February by Area Plan Commission and heard ultimately by council in Ma uh, March. Uh, so we have that moving through the process. Uh, we also then have some changes to the written commitment. So as part of the rezoning of not only the Redevelopment Commission property, but also the Sebasti properties, uh, there were some written commitments attached to the property. Uh, with this new overlay ordinance, a lot of those written commitments uh, are in conflict with the new ordinance. So we're, we're doing a, a rezoning for the modification of the, of the written commitments. Um, so that process is also going forward. That would be heard on the same night by, by council, or heard by the same night on area plan and by council. So by March, all the rezoning processes will be done. All of the other statutory processes will be done. So everything has lined itself up so that by, by March 14th or March 15th, then General Motors would be in a position to have all of its statutory things done. We've already got the incentives in place. All the other pieces are in place. This agreement would be in place. So we believe that uh, by mid-March, uh, we'd be in a very good position to, to move forward with the project. Is that when... Uh General Motors is anticipated to make a decision in the middle of March? We believe that they, they're they working through their decision-making process. They've had people on the ground here last week. Um, whatever day it was sunny last week, they had a, a, a large contingent here. Um, they, they continue to do work with us. We meet on a regular basis. So we believe the decision isn't so much a if, it's, it's more just the timing of when. So it's, we, we believe it will be soon. Again, I, I would tell you from their side, as, as we've seen with this agreement, with some of the other agreements, until all those other statutory things are done, I would, I would be surprised if we see a, a formal announcement. So March 14th would be that trigger date. You know, at a certain point, they're gonna, I think we should press them to say go, no go. I, I, I would tell you that we we are having those conversations again. We're we, we uh, at the last redevelopment commission meetings uh, signed an agreement, a three party agreement, to start working on uh, the ditch and some intersection improvements in Larison too. All of those are lining themselves up so that we can be ahead of that anticipated. But again, we have some additional costs we have to absorb in the next couple of months. And and from a timing standpoint, while it would be good to be ahead of those. We don't need to be too far ahead of those. And, and so we continue to have those discussions about that. Okay. So as of now, they're farming. As, as of, of this moment, they're planning to plant, plant there because they haven't been told not to. Correct. But we have until June. We have until, no, we actually have, in the case of the Sebastis, or the Kaminskis, we have until tomorrow to tell them that they can't farm. In the case of the Sebastis, it's later this week. So what we're going to ask for you to do is approve this re reimbursement agreement, and then we're going to ask for an additional vote to move to not, to, to exercise the no farm provision. Oh, I see, okay. So. 
and we have heard from the Ultium people that they do intend to issue the farming notice to, you know, in writing to us telling us to take those steps. Yes. So what you have received. We signed this. So we, we approve this. And then if we were to take the action to tell them not to farm, this triggers a payment to them from GM. Correct. And so the, what, you were, what you received before the meeting is they're signed <coughs> copy. So okay. General Motors has signed the okay. agreement. So they're not asking for you to sign it and then come back at some point, they okay. would sign it. They have signed the agreement. Right. Okay, thank so you. So we, <laughs> we feel that this is a, a good position to, to put us in. And, and, and again, it gives protection to the, the farmers too. So in the event that the project were to fall apart, they still get compensated. So and there for is this language year. in the agreement that in the event there's a dispute as to the amount of the farm payment, GM has agreed to either pay our attorney fees or to hire counsel and pay for the expense of that as well, and to pay any amount that would be found due in the event it goes to litigation by us. So we are covered as well as we can be covered with respect to any possible litigation. Bill, could you explain? I, I've read um, paragraph two under agreement on page two of this thing. I understand the, in the middle here, I understand about extending the option until December of 23. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the second part of that arrangement is lost on me. What happens after December 23 with the money flow? with you know what has to happen by the uh, January of 24 and then what has to happen by December of 24 and where does the money flow yeah, I'll, after I'll, that I'll let I'll let Phil address that I tried to follow that and it didn't make any sense to me yeah it's so essentially what it says is in the event that the county or a third party closes on the property um, after the 2024 date, then we have to reimburse the funds to them, to GM, if there is a payment made for the option fee. So. But isn't the whole idea of this to have the option and then transfer the option or sell the option to General Motors so we never touch it? It is. And so why would we even put that in there? It's language that GM requested for comfort on the, our request that they reimburse it. And really, tying up the property until 2024 has no effect because the options expire in 2023. That's what I was. It was lost. It's, so it's no harm to us, which is why we agreed. To okay. Right. Well, I don't feel so bad. Yeah. It didn't make any sense. I understand. Right. I, Bill and I had several discussions about it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there a motion to approve the reimbursement agreement? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion questions? I'm hearing none. Mr. Garrett? The motion is second. Mr. Goble, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Gillian? Aye. Mr. Gray? Aye. Mr. Critchlock? Aye. And Mr. Jordan? Aye. Motion carries. And then, uh, in addition, we have been informed by GM of their request to exercise the no farm option. For transparency and clarification, we would request a motion uh, allowing Bill to send notices to both the Kaminsky's and Sebastian's that the property is not to be farmed for the 2023 farming season. I'd make that motion. Second. Any further discussion? So, a motion and a second. Mr. Goble? Aye. Mr. Gillian? Aye. Mr. Krishlo? Aye. Mr. Gray? Aye. And Mr. Jordan? Aye. Motion carries. How will you make that notification? So we will do it by email, which is how we received it. We will also do it by certified mail okay. and by U.S. mail. So there will be. I have multiples. Yes. Okay. It's, yep. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. The next item on the agenda is a professional services agreement for demolition of residential properties on Douglas Road. Uh, again, as we acquire property, we don't want to be a bad property owner, especially with code enforcement in our own office. Uh, so what we'd like to do is, is put the pieces in place uh, to be in a position to demolish 14402, a property that commissioners own presently, and 14380 Douglas Road, a property that we're working to close uh, as soon as we can. Um, so what we have before you today is a professional service agreement from Christopher Burke Engineering. 
and they would do the phase one environmental report work, they would coordinate all that in the asbestos surveys, uh, they'd prepare and, and work with the county on demolition quote and quoting assistance, and then also do construction observation services. Uh, the total amount of this is a not to exceed of $20,800 and staff had asked for commission approval. What's going to, what's the intent of the use of that property subsequent to our purchase? So these are being acquired as part of a road widening for Douglas Road. And so this is, uh, these properties sit immediately right. east of the Canadian National Railroad tracks, but right. ultimately would be properties that need to be acquired by the county for improvements of, from City of Mishawaka limits to Capitol Avenue. So it'll be vacant? It will. It'll, it'll be vacant, it'll be mowed, or at some level of mowed. Well, that um, was my question. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about demolishing two older homes that are sitting Correct. there with yep. no additional building going on. Correct. Okay. Um, why do we even need to spend this kind of money? You run an environmental, you do that with a questionnaire, and then you level everything. Um, nothing else is going up. To me, it seems like a waste of money. Well, I mean, we, to, to do the demolition side of it to or do to do the, this work? Paying them $20,000 to then pay somebody else to demolish because there's no demolition work involved. Right, no. So so largely where the cost will be in, in this are the construction observation services. So we, we don't have staff at, the, at this point in time that have the ability to do construction observation in addition to all the other observation we're doing for construction projects. So this is basically outsourcing staff work. I'm just going to go there and watch him knock the dang thing down, right? Yeah, and, and it's, I, it is, I, you know, there are some complications. There's a swimming pool. There's some septic tanks that have to be removed, things like that. But it's, but it's yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the process of doing these kind of projects. We'd like to be able to bring that work back in-house. And, and I, with some staff additions that we've done in the engineering department, we're hoping that over the course of the summer we can, we can do that, build that, that uh, uh, workload. At this point in time, we just don't have that capacity. It just doesn't seem like it's a good use of money, given what it's going to be used for afterwards, yeah. but nope. I understand. Is, assume then we need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? The motion is second. Mr. Goble? Aye. Mr. Gillian? Aye. Mr. Greif? No. Mr. Critchlow? Aye. Mr. Jordan. Aye. Motion carries 4-1. So I think the last thing on the agenda under additional business, section 4, there, there are no reports for the other, the other three districts. Other than I would say if, uh, if you haven't been out by the Honeysuckle Project site, uh, you can't see it from US-20. You have to drive down Snowberry Road a little bit. But they started building the construction yard for the site. Uh, I think they put up two and a half miles of fence. They've, they've slagged in a yard. They've already gotten deliveries. Of course, they were receiving deliveries of, of panels and, and other equipment uh, during a snowstorm. And so there were uh, frequent calls saying, hey, can you plow the road for us? Well, we got other roads that need to be plowed too. So, um, so uh, but it, it's, it is moving at a very aggressive pace. So that project is uh, kind of off to the races. So. Um, the, the additional business, the contract log, we've had this in the packet before. This is complete through 2022. Um, but uh, so, and Tom, I will send you an Excel version of this uh, after the meeting. So, but if there's any questions about that, I just wanted to circulate that again. So, we continue to build backwards. The other thing we're going to work on with this, uh, Tom and I were talking about this before the meeting, it tells what the budget was, but it doesn't tell what we've actually spent. So we're, we're working, we know that we've got some open line items. Um, so we're working to figure out where the open line items are so we can determine if it's a closed project or if it's something that we still need to be billing against, things like that. It's just, again, the, the way as we try to figure out where all our money is, uh, you know, the best way to do that. A lot of these are one-time projects, appraisals, uh, things like that. So Terry's looking forward to this as his new research project. Oh, I haven't told him that. I have a, a question. Yeah. Um, a couple meetings ago, several meetings ago, you guys completed a list, I think, of um, county-owned properties. Yes. All right? And it took you a, while, a couple goes mm -hmm. at it, but you pretty much have your arms around that now. Um, is there any additional work that needs to be done there, or is that 
pretty so, much complete. No, so there's a couple. I think the, the list, as I understand it, is generally complete, although we keep buying property. So um, a couple different things are happening. One, City of South Bend, MACOG, and the county are working together on a study on land banks. And so the City of South Bend in particular is interested in setting up a land bank for for properties within city limits. Um, so the county's participating in uh, as maybe a way to get rid of county properties that, that don't have some value. We've got some some properties that you know are part of drainage projects or part of infrastructure, things like that, that we have to keep. Uh, but but accessory project or properties, we're gonna look to see how that might fit within a land bank option. Um, other properties, uh, we, we've identified some that uh, uh, could be sold, and so we're starting to, to go through that process. We've been through kind of a, a transition as far as some of the county attorneys that are working with some of these things, but that is a, a, a request to the commissioners to figure out what we own and what we can get rid of. So we, it, it's one of those projects that's on the, on the burner, and then it kind of slides a little bit and, and moves back and forth. Um, I will tell you that one of the, the, the comments that's come up in particular is with the tax sale. So we have the tax sale once a year and a commissioner sale. And, and so what are some ways that uh, we can start to absorb some properties, to amass some properties, so that we can, we can get rid of properties in a bigger chunk? So, uh, you know, we may own two or three, and then there's one that goes up for sale in the middle. So is there a way to do that and then aggregate some properties to... Um, so there's, there's some conversations. Again, for the last four or five months, we haven't had the staff to do that. And again, there's an opportunity now with Terry to, to start working on some of those things. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, this, I've always viewed this as a two-step project. The first one is getting your arms around it. Yep. Step two is really the action step. Now what are we going to do? Um, just my opinion is a land bank is a great use. And having the county work with the city either in two separate land, bank, land banks or one, doesn't really matter. No. But I'd encourage you to keep pushing forward with that idea. We got a meeting on Friday. Okay. So, I mean, it, it's, it's that fluid at this point Thank in time, you. so, yep. Okay, thanks, Tom. Any other new business from me? Okay, so we move to the public comment. As usual, please your state your, your name, uh, address, and limit it to a three minute Comment. Good morning, Dan Caruso, 305 Compton Street, New Carlisle. Uh, thank you, Commission, for your oversight here, for, for your on-point questions. Uh, I know all my questions have been answered this morning. Um, uh, I, I do, however, uh, want to promote New Carlisle even further. Uh, uh, Mr. Shalio uh, gave a discussion of a brief discussion of the South Shore Station, uh, further growth in New Carlisle. As I start, to, as I see that town crumble even more with the closing of Zoll's Grain at the bottom, at the foot of the hill there uh, from Ray Street, which runs into Zoll's. I uh, talked to some old timers, older than me, timers in town, that uh, indicated there used to be a train station. At that, at the Zoll's location, and I'm I'm just up here to suggest this morning for everybody to maybe start talking about it. Uh, Zoll's is for sale. That is where the train station should go, so people can walk up the hill into town, into the businesses. My, I, I've mentioned this before in private. I, I talked to Bill briefly about it. We need something that keeps the people in town overnight rather than have to come in every day for hometown days, come in to shop, well, the village floors is no longer there, but whatever stores happen to come in town, we need overnight housing. We need a Hampton Inn, New Carlisle, on that site that used to be the trailer park, possibly even buy the Legion that's been for sale for some time, use that property to bring in temporary housing for people coming in for our festivals, uh, for Notre Dame home games, you're, you're 15 minutes from campus. Um, I, I don't know what's involved with, with getting these folks involved, but I think those would be great ideas. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you. Anyone else attending wish to speak? Is there anyone online? I didn't see any. Okay. Yes, then, is there a no further business motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Do you? Make, did you make the first or I'm sorry? Aye. 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 Aye.
Aye. Aye. Jordan. Aye. We are adjourned. If you guys could sit for just a minute so we can get some signatures.